Today I'm gonna show you how to make a no budget short film from start to finish like the one you're about to see. But before I show you the behind the scenes, here's the final result. You know, they say that when you edit a photo that you captured, you can actually go back to the place where you took that photo and remember the feelings you've experienced during that day. Well, I'm trying to find out if that's true. There is only one thing that gets me out of bed in the morning, and that's my freedom. That's why I love being a landscape photographer and spending most of my time in nature, you know? I feel free out here. When I get to a location that I'm not familiar with, usually the first thing I do is to scout the area. Getting lost in the infinite wonders of our own existence makes me realize how much of a gift life actually is and how special we are to perceive it. At this point, I'm just walking around in circles, trying to find out that perfect composition to create a memory with a photo. But then, all of a sudden, I take a moment to myself and to really appreciate the sunlight going through my body. I can see the details, I can hear the sounds, I can almost taste them in my mouth. And this is the time I feel most inspired to capture that feeling with my camera and I start shooting. I love walking through these trails that take me to such amazing locations, such amazing landscapes. Unfortunately, there's a point when I realize that the sunlight isn't gonna last much longer, so it's time for one final photo before going back home. When that sunlight is going away and I see those beautiful colors of Mother Nature right before my eyes, the only thing that matters is to take a photo and make that beautiful moment eternal in my memory. And that is everything. And then I capture it. They say that when you edit a photo that you captured, you can actually go back to the place where you took that photo and remember the feelings you experienced during that day. Well, I think that's true. What's up you guys, Vitor Pinhão here, welcome back to my channel and I really hope that you liked my short film called Landscape Memories. I had a lot of fun making this no budget short film with my buddy Tiago Schutz and today I will break it down so you can see all the process that I took to make it happen and hopefully inspire you guys to go ahead and make your own no budget short film. And I will split this video into three main sections. Number one is going to be the pre-production phase where I'm going to talk about how I came up with the story, the shot list, actor, wardrobe and locations. Number two will be the production phase where I will talk about the gear and camera settings I used and I will also show you guys some behind the scenes where I will talk about some filming and lighting techniques. And finally number three will be the post-production phase where I'm going to talk about editing the story together, color grading, aspect ratio, masking, audio and some final touches. And because this will be a very long and in-depth video, I will leave timestamps in the description below so you can find whatever you're looking for right away without wasting any of your time. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, let's start with the pre-production phase. And the first thing that I had to figure out was of course the story. Because I love so much taking photos of landscapes, for the story, I really wanted the short film to be about the memories and feelings of a landscape photographer. And basically this landscape photographer is at his office editing a photo that he has captured one week earlier and is trying to figure out if he can remember the feelings he has experienced on the day that he captured that photo, just by editing it. And then all of a sudden, as he edits the photo, he starts to remember everything about that day and he can actually feel how he felt on that particular day as well. So this was the general idea that I had in my head 
And this was also the time that I started to write it down. Which brings us to the next step, the shot list. And here detail is key. So I made a very detailed shot list about what I was going to shoot. From the wide establishing shots, to the mid-range shots, the close-ups and the drone shots. And this was a big help on the shooting day, because the shot list also works kind of as a plan and walkthrough when you don't have a storyboard. Which, by the way, I didn't have one. And when I was not sure about what to shoot next, I would just check out the shot list and I was ready to go for the next shot. But I want to tell you guys something. Even though there were a lot of shots that were on the shot list and that I did use on the final video, there were also a lot of shots that were not on the shot list, but I did use them on the final video as well. Actually, I ended up shooting a lot of other things that I didn't have on the shot list and this is fine because although you want to shoot everything that you already have on the shot list, I think it's also important to improvise and get creative in the process when you're on location. And I think that the final result will be much better this way because you will have a lot more options during the post-production. When I first came up with the story and the shot list for this short film, and because I would be the one shooting the whole thing, I needed someone to be the actor. And since Tiago and I have been friends for a long time now, and he's also very passionate about filmmaking and photography, I decided to send him a DM on Instagram asking if he wanted to make this short film with me. And guess what? He immediately said yes, so that was awesome. By the way, you should go ahead and subscribe to Tiago's channel that I will leave in the description below, so make sure you go give him some love. For the wardrobe, I wanted something that a landscape photographer would wear. So Tiago and I talked about this and we decided to keep it simple and we chose a costume with an orange outdoor jacket, regular black jeans and brown boots for the outdoor scenes. And for the office scenes though, we chose a black t-shirt underneath a cool patterned shirt. Because this short film was going to be about a landscape photographer, for the outdoor scenes I decided to pick a location in the mountains here in Portugal to really showcase the nature. This location is one hour far from where I live here in Portugal, but I knew that it would look very nice because it has areas with trees and also has areas with plain terrain. In this case, I already knew this location beforehand. But if you're planning to shoot your next short film, I definitely recommend you to go to the location and scout the area before you start shooting. Because this way you can plan your shot list much better and things will go a lot easier on the shooting day. For the office scene when he's editing the photograph, we actually shot it here in my office. Okay, let's talk about the production phase and I will start with the gear I used. So about the camera setup that I used to make this short film, the camera was the Panasonic Lumix GH5, which I used with my battery grip. For the lenses, I used my Panasonic Lumix 42.5mm f1.7 with my 37mm variable ND filter from Polaroid, but I only used this lens for just one shot during the whole film. The main lens though that I used for 99% of the shots was the Sigma Art 18-35mm f1.8 EF mount which I used with my 72mm variable ND filter from Gobi. And to be able to mount my Sigma 18-35mm f1.8 on my camera, I had to use my Viltrox EF M2 Mark II Speed Booster for Canon EF mount lenses. The field monitor was the Andy Cine A6 and the microphone was the Deity V-Mic D3 Pro. The rig was the half cage from Small Rig, and this is the version for Panasonic Lumix GH5 cameras with battery grip, and I also used a left wooden handle from Small Rig as well. Currently, I don't own a drone, and I don't know how to fly drones either. So for the aerial shots, I asked my buddy Tiago to shoot them with his drone, which is the DJI Air 2S. For the outdoor scenes, I didn't use any artificial light. But for the office scene, I did use one Godox SL60W with a parabolic softbox from Newer, two Aperture AL MC RGB, one Aperture AL F7, two Agabis RGB and two Ulanzi VL49 RGB. I will leave links in the description below for this gear if you guys want to check it out. 
And those are affiliate links, meaning that if you click on one of my links and make a purchase, I will earn a small commission with no additional cost to you. Okay, the general settings I used was 4K, 10-bit, 422. I used my Panasonic Lumix 3H5 custom natural profile with contrast at minus 5, sharpness at minus 5, noise reduction at minus 4, saturation at minus 2, and U at minus 1. I shot most scenes at 24 frames per second with the shutter speed set at 1 50th of a second for the majority of the shots, although I also used 60 frames per second with the shutter speed set at 1 1 25th of a second for those nature b-roll shots. For the aperture, I varied between f1.2 and 2.8 depending on the depth of field that I was looking for for each shot, and for the ISO, I varied between 200 and 400, depending on the exposure that each shot needed. And finally, the white balance was set at daylight, 5600 Kelvin, throughout the whole shoot. For the short film, I decided to film everything and held on purpose, to give a more shaky feeling to the final video because I wanted the audience to feel like they were there with the landscape photographer. And if I were to shoot this short film, for example, on a gimbal, the final result would be very smooth, but it would be like a third-person feeling, as opposed to the first-person feeling that filming handheld can deliver. Also, filming handheld speeds up the process of filming, and when you're using gimbals, they kinda slow you down, because you need to balance the gimbal before start shooting, and you don't have the same freedom about camera movements. And so, I embraced that shaky feeling and decided to go with it. And I didn't worry too much about the fact that this would be a very shaky video because here's the thing, if you're gonna go and held, you need to accept that it's going to be a very shaky video. And so when I was filming, I was like, hey, this is going to be a very natural, we're walking with him, we're feeling what he's feeling, and that was gonna be the whole vibe of the video. I used manual focus for every shot, and I always grab focus on my subject before start recording. Then, when filming, the only two things that I was kind of taking care of were one, maintaining the same distance from the subject so it didn't go out of focus, and two, try to maintain a good framing composition during the shooting. Also, one important thing that I did during the entire shoot was to try to incorporate some foreground into my shots whenever I could because by doing this, I can create a lot more depth into my scenes. And so I was always looking for grass, plants, or trees that I could use as foreground. Let's talk about lighting. For the outdoor scenes, I just used natural lights and everything was shot early in the morning during golden hour. We actually woke up at 5 a.m. to be able to arrive at location at around 6.30 a.m. so we could have those nice colors and soft lighting during golden hour. For the office scene though, I did use some artificial lighting. So the main source of light was the sun coming from the windows, which was a big problem because I didn't have any artificial lighting inside the office in the first place. And when I tried to properly exposed the subject on camera, the windows were completely blown out. Because of that, I had to place some artificial lighting inside the office to counter the sunlight coming from the windows. And trust me, when you're trying to counter the sunlight, you will need a lot of artificial lighting. So that's what I did. And to quickly break it down for you, I used two Aperture ALMC and two Agabis RGB and I positioned them on the front just out of frame and I placed them at a 45 degree angle to the right side of my character and they were dialed to a cyan color in order to look like those were the cool tones coming from the windows. Then as a fill light I used one Aperture AL F7 dialed at 5600 Kelvin on the front and I placed it at a 45 degree angle to the left side of my character and this light was also out of frame. As a rim light, I used a Godox SL60W with a parabolic softbox from newer on the back and I placed it at a 45 degree angle to the left side of my character. And this light is in frame, so it's not only acting as a rim light, but also as a practical light. All the other lights that I used on the back of the scene were practicals, and I used 
two ULAN ZVL-49, one placed behind the coffee machine and another placed behind the plant, both dialed at a cyan color and I also add my lightning bolt neon that I bought on Amazon and my other practicals that I bought on Ikea. I just want to take a quick moment to ask you guys, if you are finding this video valuable and helpful, please hit that like button. That really helps this channel and this video out. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and that bell down below. But let's get back to the video. All right, let's talk about the post-production process. And even though I already had an idea of what the basic structure of the story would be beforehand, the editing phase and when I was looking through the footage on my computer were the parts where I really put all the pieces together like a puzzle. And this was where the story really came up together. The basic editing structure was divided into three main sections, Act 1, Act 2 and Act 3. Act 1 is basically the opening narration to establish the character and the world where he lives. And he's trying to find out if he can remember the feelings he has experienced when he took the photo. Which in this short film, this is the first part where he is in the office editing the photo and also a little bit when he's driving the car and kind of introducing himself. This brings us to Act number 2, which is the rising action of the story where the character is going back and actually starts to remember how he felt when he took the photograph. And this really gives him more awareness and determination about the question he's trying to answer as the story approaches more and more to the climax scene. So in this short film, the act number two is the middle part where the character is walking through the forest alone and then starts to photograph and to become more and more aware of his feelings. And finally, act number three is when the character actually finds out the answer to the question he had in the first place. Which in the short film, this is the final part where his memories and feelings are at its peak, when he's on top of the rock taking his final photo. This brings us to the resolution, which is the point where he's at the office and he finds out the answer to the first question. And by using this editing structure, I was able to choose the right clips and put together a 24 frames per second sequence with a nice little edit that tells a story. So for color grading, I started by color correcting all the clips on my timeline and then I used an adjustment layer with two of my LEDs on top of the footage. For the office scene, I used my cine dramatic LED and for the outdoor scene, I used my moody LED. These two LEDs are included in the full version of my cine LED spec and I will leave a link in the description below if you guys want to check them out. For the aspect ratio, I shot everything at a 19 by 10 Cinema 4K aspect ratio on my GH5 camera, which is just a tiny bit wider than the regular 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But in the editing, I decided to crop the footage and I chose a wider aspect ratio, which was 2.39 by 1. So this is a super wide screen aspect ratio. And in my opinion, it just gives a much more cinematic look to the short film. For this video, I did some masking on the car license plates to kinda blur them out and I also did some masking on the car window. And this was because, as I said before, currently I don't know how to fly drones. So in order to capture the car passing by on the aerial shots, I was actually the one driving the car. And my buddy Tiago was with me inside the car flying the drone, but he appears in the car window looking at the drone. So I had to mask him and erase him from the footage. When it comes to music, I wanted to use a very dramatic song that would have some orchestra in it and that would be very cinematic. So because I use artlist.io to find music for all my videos, I went on their website and I found an artist called Tristan Barton that had the perfect music that I was looking for and I ended up using two of his tracks for this short film. For the sound design, there's not a lot going on because I did capture audio when I was filming. And the audio that I captured with my DD D3 Pro microphone ended up to be the main source of sound for this short film. However, I did use sound effects and some of them were, for example, the camera sounds when the character is taking photos, some forest and birds ambient sounds here and there, some sounds from a car door when he's getting out of the car, some footsteps here and there to kind of enhance the sound of the character walking. I also added a Foley sound effect from bones breaking to kind of enhance the sound of a pine tree creaking. 
and I also added a riser and an explosion sound at the end of the video. Again, most of these sound effects were downloaded from artlist.io and if you guys want to check them out, I will leave a referral link in the description below and you can get two free months if you subscribe to their service for a full year. Take in mind though that that is a referral link, which means that I will also get extra months if you subscribe to their service by using my link. This is not sponsored by Artlist.io, but they offer a great service with royalty-free music and sound effects and I'm very happy to share it with you guys. And finally, for the voiceover, first I wrote the text on my computer, then I recorded it using my Shure PG42 USB condenser microphone. Finally, I imported it to my project and to enhance the sound a little bit, I added some filters, which were a soft compressor, hard limiter, equalizer, and a deesser. For the final touches, I added a title for the short film, then my logo at the end. I also added a flare overlay on top of the footage to kinda enhance the transitions from the office to the outdoor scene at the beginning and at the end of the video. And the last thing I done was adding some grain on top of the footage to make it look more cinematic. So there you go, guys. This was all the process that I went through from start to finish in order to make this no budget short film. I definitely still think that I have a lot to learn, but I'm very happy with the final result and I'm very curious to know what do you think. So go ahead and leave a comment below, I would love to hear your thoughts. And that's it guys, I really really hope you liked this video, I hope you find it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press that little bell for notifications if you haven't already. Smash that like button because that really helps this channel and if you like the look of my videos, then be sure to click on this video right over here where I talk about the camera settings that I use for cinematic video and I'll see you guys over there. Bye bye!